Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of The Marketing Happy Hour, where you'll find us actually on Facebook at The Marketing Happy Hour. My name is Dr. Christopher Vogelman. I am one of your hosts for today. I'm with Maximize Your Media, which you can see there. Whoops, there. I got to get used to the pointing thing, which is our digital agency where we do lots of work with Facebook, live video marketing, as well as tons of Pinterest and Facebook ads. Uh, and oh, I was going to mention our coaching program, which also is uh, I do a coaching program called Life Beyond Practice, which is for doctors who want greater free time, freedom and fun outside of the office by building their own online businesses. So we do it for you. And with me to my whatever uh, direction I am. Hey, I'm John Paduchak and uh, JohnPaduchak.com and Targeted Net Solutions is our digital agency. And um, I teach people about live video. And we got a great program coming up soon, uh, live video for medical professionals. Shh. Keep the suspense. <laughs> We're talking about that. So that's hey, coming up. And we got a guest this week. Today. Yes, your guest. Good yes. guest. Uh, my good friend Ed Winslow. I'll let Ed tell you a little bit about what he does and introduce himself. So go well, ahead. All right. All right. Well, I... Uh, so I've been in the internet marketing space for a long time, uh, about probably 15 years, you know, off and on. It didn't start full time, uh, but uh, but anyway, um, just I am launching a new venture, which is uh, pretty interesting. And the domain name is is um, 10xdisplayads.com. Uh -huh. And the 10xdisplayads.com is it's a uh, display ad system. Uh, that I have applied to commercial real estate and residential real estate, but uh, it's a really, really cool strategy where we can create a set of 10 ads, 15 different sizes per ad set. And then the ads will rotate like every, uh, on average, let's say nine days. And they will rotate for 90 days. And then they, if, if the ads are, if they're all performing, we can just keep let them keep running, but it avoids ad blindness and you know, and we can create each ad is a little bit different. So every time somebody sees your ad, it's a little bit different. Eye catching. We can use uh, motion ads and I'm working on video ads. Cool. And these ads get on like, you know, Fox News and CNN and and it's a really, really cool program. It's very inexpensive and it's a good Do, program. So and I have a question. So do they go on the affiliate sites like the the local uh, news sites? The local affiliate sites. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, gotcha. and so the reason the reason I brought Ed along today is because, yeah, why the hell did you bring him along? Yeah, see, because <laughs> Ed was kind of our surprise guest for today. So Ed and I have been working together on our local marketing strategies group, and you know we were talking about the display ad strategy and some of the other different things that we're playing with there. And he wanted to start doing a series of live videos, uh -huh. which is what we're talking about today. And so um, I figured, you know, Ed can Ed and I can walk through with you and talk to you even a little bit about some of the stuff we did today preparing for this. That sounds well, good. So, so yeah, wait, what? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, yeah, let me just jump in for a second. So okay. what I, one of the things I'm doing in our local marketing strategies group is I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking hopefully on a daily basis, at least for a few minutes about how this whole business came about, what the business model is, and how I'm implementing it from, you know, doing the keyword research up front. How do I create the sales page? How am I creating the message? You know, the SEO, the local Google My Business optimization. Um, and then how we're going to build out the blogs, how we're going to implement video into the whole plan. So it's going to be like a soup to nuts starting. It's like what, what I'm doing is sort of like the crash test uh, what, what do you call it? crash, crash test test of a business. <laughs> so it's you know what i'm looking at is that on paper this should be a you know for a small business i should be able to find 30 40 50 clients that are anywhere from 1500 to let's say five thousand dollar a month clients yeah. and if i can achieve that then i've got a good business i've got one of my clients is a commercial real estate broker in new york city so he's Perfect. going to be the sales guy. I'm sort of like the business operator in the middle. I work with him. And then I have a woman that's been with me for 
about eight years who does all my fulfillment. She's super bright. And so she's going to handle the fulfillments. We've got a little team of three. I've got a business model that I think has potential of a million, two million. You could probably scale it from there if you're a good business operator, if I can get to that level. So I'm going to go through the whole concept is to talk through on a daily basis the evolution of this business, where it started and how it's growing. And that's, uh, you, that's great because people love the behind the scenes stuff. And it's almost like having a video diary that you can turn back to in future years. And you could even productize it into here's my here's my entrepreneurial adventure and sell it as a package. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm also I'm using it as a, for a couple of things, a couple of reasons. One is that I want to build out the Facebook group because the Facebook mm -hmm. group has already generated some leads for me or, or new business, actually. Yeah. And I'm finding that, you know, it does it does uh, position you as an expert authority. Uh, people trust you when you run a group. Mm -hmm. And so I, what I want to do is I want to build it as far as I can. So right now, you know, we, John and I, you know, we started it a number of months ago. We only have 150 members, but it's, it's still good, you know, but I'd like to be able to take it to, you know, a thousand members or more. Well, yeah, it's interesting because memberships are tricky. The the bigger, like if you have membership groups are like 5,000, 10,000, even more than that, they get to the point where you really don't have the same level of engagement. And if you're staying like to 1,000 or something like that, it's easy to actually respond and have people talking to each other in the group and that sort of thing. Because ultimately, you want that sort of deep connection, that kind of digital intimacy that everybody's striving for and to get the return on relationships, as Ted Rubin would say, that's one of the things that is really important is not let the size get out of control so that you they don't feel um, slightly disconnected from you. Yeah. Course, I'd rather have a quality group yeah. than a quality yeah. group. I absolutely. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's a certain audience that is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what perfect. I'm looking for. Is yeah, well, live live video is perfect for you. Hey, I have a very important question, which is, what is everybody drinking? Because this is the happy hour. Water. You know, I, 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 you know what? I um, my my wife just went out for a run, and uh, she left so you high and dry. When she, when she gets back, my wife is a runner, oh, cool. and when she gets back from the run, um, we will have some wine. I see. Is it your okay. wife that saw behind you earlier? Yeah. Did you see her before? I did see her before. Yeah, Tony. Was it was your wife or your daughter? No, no. no, no. <laughs> you married young. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah. have, I have this. This cup is indicative of where I am these days. This is actually all coffee, because I've had an average of about three point seven five hours of sleep probably for the last three days. So, yeah. hence the the challenge of putting together a a video yeah. course. So. <laughs> I really you thought go, we were launching. You, you, you go with the cap, the baseball cap a lot. Well, no, just this is this is my presidential cap in honor of of uh, the orange man. Oh, um, is that right? Mike. Yeah, you're an orange <laughs> man. Are you, you're an orange man fan. Well, no, it's also my sister lives in Syracuse, so I have a lot of so Syracuse orange. orange material. Oh, okay, those. those <laughs> I mean, orange, orange, aren't you glad I we invited you? <laughs> Yeah, we get into the whole Western New York, Syracuse thing. You know, I agree. Yeah, I, I had so, my Buffalo shirt on, my Buffalo Bills shirt on for all day Sunday. And I mean, the comeback was was absolutely necessary. I almost thought my wearing my shirt was bad luck until the final touchdown. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so back to back to live video. So yeah. what do you do? You, do you have questions about strategy or the types of things you want to do in terms of frequency? You mentioned that you were doing live video on a daily basis for how long do you think? And maybe two minutes I mean, snippets I, or five minute things or what? Short, short, under 15 short? minutes. Yeah. Under 15 minutes. Under 15. You know, I don't know whether it's five minutes or 15, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of feedback I'm going to get. I don't know if anybody's even going to show up. It's so oh. variable. It's so yeah. variable. My yeah. wife has recently been doing TikTok of all things for a Mexican. Really? Family. Yeah. But this is what happens. So she takes, she takes, so we do the Instagram live and of course, Instagram live, you got to have the phone and vertical right. format. And so take, she takes the Instagram live, has it edited into a square format for regular Instagram, has it put on IGTV and then sends a small edited 15 second to TikTok, sends that TikTok of the formerly live video back to Instagram. And that TikTok to Instagram 
is just, I mean, it's, it's interesting to see sometimes it works and sometimes it's horrible. Mm -hmm. so, we tried out yeah. um, Facebook live with two people today on the iPhone. That was very interesting. Yeah. So what, so what, what do you think with what I was saying about, you know, uh, you know, this live case study, this ongoing here, here I am doing the crash test for the uh, dummy for the business. Uh, what, what do you think? It's it's reality TV yeah. in short form, and it's going to be very engaging, particularly when you show how things blow up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole point. I, it's not yeah. just what worked, but it's like what it's doesn't work. Yeah. And, sure. Yeah. yeah. We're here this is, it's, it's like NASCAR, where a lot of people actually show up to see a crash. A crash, yeah. So. <laughs> that's true. Very true. That's a good idea. So maybe I get a backdrop with some crashes, like some well, car crashes. <laughs> Or or the 1929 stock market. We're just going to go down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, so, so I think it's a great strategy. And depends. I mean, we've seen. So one of the things that I mentioned in my premature marketing happy hour yeah. two hours ago was uh, is pre premature broadcasting. I don't know if there's a cure for that, John, other than setting your alarm. Yeah. <laughs> and so with pre premature broadcasting, I did mention that. Uh, a lot of people whom we know and who've done a lot of live broadcasting find that, for example, to appease the Facebook gods or the Zookbook people, the algorithm seems to respond to you if you've done things consistently for about six months. Now, it's not saying you have to broadcast every single day for six months, but if you have maybe one broadcast a week or two a week, you can probably get to that. Right. Right. Premature broadcast. Is that another speaker. Is that the John? Sorry. Now, how about I should, have, I should have muted you, John? What, what do you think about um, what do you think about attire and things like that? Should I should I wear a should I wear a hat? Oh, you can do anything you want. Normally, I don't wear a hat, but I'm having a bad hair day, so I have a well, COVID. I, don't have I have a hair left, so I've, I don't I've have got a COVID hair. cut, and so that's why I put it on top. Plus, I was outside for a while, and you know, it's 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 one of those things. Attire really doesn't matter as long as it's consistent with your branding. Now, for me, I I usually. Most of the time, you'll see that I, when I even post on uh, comments on different people's lives and things like that, like Rich Sheffer and a few others, I'll typically have sunglasses and two palm trees on either side. And that's just become part of my branding, just the emojis themselves. And I've actually worked it into a logo for Dr. V, which originally started out as Dr. Fun. And the Dr. V logo, if you see it on my website, it's got, you know, like a uh, a medical smock or, or scrubs with a stethoscope and a bunch of things, but it was way too busy in terms of colors. And so I've been kind of bringing it down more and more as many months go by. I mean, I did the branding back in April of last year and I just, I failed to launch because I had too great a sense of perfectionism. And when I'm recognizing the beauty of live broadcasting is that you can stumble, you can fall, and people are very forgiving. And so going live, I think to a great extent has helped to dissolve my sense of perfectionism. Um, but branding, whatever your brand is, I mean, normally I don't wear orange. Normally I'm wearing blue just because right. it, it picks up the baby blues and maybe the blue cap. But I think eventually my branding colors are going to be kind of like Syracuse. It's going to be blue and well, orange. The orange is great. It yeah. really pops. But blue and orange. But my goal is to have blue as the main thing. And yeah. probably I'm not going to do a Chris Record orange cap, but I'll probably go with the same blue and then have the logo in orange. I think that's going to be the thing that goes. But I mean, you can change it up, which is to have, you know, I could have shirts that are embroidered with the logo, for example. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong. You, you pick whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, yeah. I tend to go with collared shirts. I know a lot of people who go with uh, just, um, well, think of Rich Sheffern. He goes just with a standard black t-shirt. It's almost like watching Steve Jobs. You know, <laughs> it's the same outfit every single time. So you've got that consistent branding. Uh, I mean, it's really up to you. Sometimes you just change it up. You show different uh, clothes, make yourself really formal on a Friday. One of my friends whom I've done, uh, Monica, Monica Klein, I've done Total Health Live with her, and she dresses up every Friday when we do that at one, which, by the way, I think that was it. One o'clock Instagram Lives with my wife and one o'clock Friday Lives with Monica had me going live in my delirium at one o'clock. <laughs> but, yeah. but I learned an, an interesting lesson. I even went on Instagram and told people what 
up I had. I did it on Instagram Live, and I sent that to IGTV. I don't know if I'm going to do my TikTok. My TikTok is so small, it's hardly worth it. Um, but there is there a TikTok Live, or is this short video? It's recorded video. Just, just video. Oh. It's, it's just video. How, how many you people know, are on? How many people are on right now watching? Um, and then the number doesn't matter. We've had. Let's see. Earlier, I had like five at any given time. It's hard for me to tell. Right now, there's nobody. But that's okay because most, yeah, most of our content is consumed. Yeah, we're consumed on replay. Yeah, it's it's hashtag replay that gets us most of the views because we'll have we'll have broadcasts where one person shows up, like Terry showed up earlier today, one of our super fans. And yeah, Troy showed up. Okay. And so, so it was interesting. I even had, I even had, I had a fellow who was on today who was uh, running for our local school board. He showed up also on the live. Wow. <laughs> so, but, but here's the thing: it's repurposing that content and playing into the algorithm, letting Facebook know that you're creating organic content for them, that that really helps. And so, by the way, you know, you may we may have one where two people show up live, and then you'll have seventy views. So, and, and here's the thing, you know, this goes to YouTube. I've had the same broadcast going simultaneously because we're simulcasting to YouTube right now. And sometimes there's three people who show up on YouTube, 10 people show up on YouTube. Sometimes it's zero, but the views come later. See? And we're also appeasing the YouTube algorithm simultaneously. So, right, right. And that's all from StreamYard. From StreamYard, yeah. Because right now... Now, now, now what's... So do you, yeah. do you will you record this and then post it on Facebook as it's, well? It's currently being recorded um, okay. on Facebook. It's being okay. recorded on Streamline's Streamline, uh, sorry, StreamYard's yeah. servers right now. And they just upgraded to 1080p a few weeks back. And so now we can actually download that recording. But that recording only exists on StreamYard servers for 15 days. And after that, it evaporates so if so, you want to get so, the record you gotta get it so, so this is this is being shown on facebook right now as well yes this is yeah. on facebook um it's in a well what you john you know the places it's like yeah, 30 three different places on facebook uh yeah. youtube uh, are we still doing twitter i uh, yeah we're on we're on periscope right now periscope. okay so yeah. when, it, when it posts on facebook is it posting to a group that you designate or yes. is it yeah, but we we have done that. So yeah. so I have on my personal profile, I have it on my my professional profile, That's Dr. Vogel. Cool. Yeah, we've got thirty day John's thirty day uh, live video That's challenge. Challenge. So, so you can post this live to show in a couple different spots. Mm -hmm. and we're on eight. We're, we're six yeah. places. At the well, six no, places. we're in eight locations. They up they upped it to eight. We're now in eight locations right now. Cool. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's what I need to learn how to do. So so I can post yeah. it on my personal page. And then my group page, yeah, and then also simultaneously on YouTube. Now on YouTube, would it be on my designated channel? Whichever yeah. one you choose. You could even have more than one designated channel. Okay, yeah. and then when when it's recorded, once it's done, do you hit record and it can you? No, you, some you just hit you just hit download. There's it within the StreamYard interface. I wonder if I can, no, I can't show it because no. I've tried this before on a live broadcast. You can't show the stream. We yeah. probably have to do, John, I think we should probably do just screenshots of the screen, StreamYard interface and show those. Because if I try to do that, the whole thing goes into infinity and it's- Okay, so, okay. Yeah. so, you're, so you're broadcasting live on Facebook, yeah. six different spots or eight. It's, yeah. And, it's, and also, yeah. On, also on YouTube. And then yeah. when you're done, you download it and then you just upload it to your YouTube or your Facebook page as well. Whatever, as whatever you want, because right now, for example, so I have this going into, so we have it going to John. So we have groups. So there's several groups that it's going into. So we, it's going into 30 day live video challenge, which is John's group. It's going into live event marketers right now, which is Troy McDonald's group, which has, gosh, there's like hundreds and hundreds, close to 700 people there. Yeah. It's going, yeah, it's huge. It's going to, my my personal profile on Facebook. It's going to my professional Dr. Vogelman profile. It's going to my my uh, page, which is called Crucial Business, which I'm I'm changing the branding of of my Life Beyond Practice to just Crucial Business and the Crucial Method, because I want to own my own little methodology. And it's going also to you can also share this in advance to other pages if you have other properties. Yeah. And it's shared on Twitter right now live if somebody wants to watch. 
And then before the broadcast takes place, it just shows that it's scheduled. Yeah. And when the broadcast takes place, it gets replaced by the uh, the live video. Yeah. Like I, I, I created something really quick and dirty in Canva to put up here so that it looked a little different. Mm-hmm. Our normal, our normal, you, you have the option on StreamYard to put an image in there for your broadcast. So that image will show up. And so because I want the image to pop a little bit, I created a different type of, uh, uh, I used a, 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 a royalty-free image in the background, and then I put our little logo, which is basically a text logo for the marketing happy hour. And then we have a right. little logo that I, I've used for, um, God, what was it, John? It was the one for uh, health broadcasters. We have a right. separate logo for health right broadcasters. Here, next to my face. Well, no, that was, that's the market marketing happy hour logo, but it is... It does use something does use similar. Of it, yeah, it has something similar to it. Yeah. yeah. Is that the name of your, what is marketing uh, happy hour? Is that a- You're on uh, it. This is, is that the name of the show? show? This is the name of our little show right now, every Wednesday, the marketing yeah. happy hour. It's, it's a show and it's also, it has its own page. Mm-hmm. And it, it has its own page, which is called The Marketing Happy Hour. And we have the domain and everything else like that. So somebody else had Marketing Happy Hour, but they haven't done anything, I think, since 2015. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I, still, I still think there's a big difference between using StreamYard and BeLive and those yeah. and doing the actual uh, and actually using um, Facebook, Facebook Producer. Call. Producer, yeah. Producer, live producer, so yeah. We so Ed and I were playing around a little earlier with producer, yeah. just trying to see what that. Did looked you get like. two people in there on live, on live produ- on producer? We did get two people on. Wow, producer. I have never succeeded in. That. Yes, we did. So is this John? Do you do, do you guys think this is the platform that I should be using? Because I want to try and keep it simple and consistent. I think you do want to use a bit of a combination. So if you're going to do like talking head video, I think you want to use your phone and use Facebook producer so that you're using Facebook Live directly. Because when we used Instagram directly, when we did Facebook Live directly, you could definitely see a difference. You'd get like 10 people watching, you know, like almost all at once. So there's a big difference in doing that. And then once they get watching you, you can use a StreamYard or be Live or Zoom to broadcast to Facebook for bigger things where you wanna do um, uh, screen capture, you know, screen um, sharing and all of that. Because um, one of the flaws, which I, I don't know if they've fixed that. We'll have to try that out, Dr. V. What? See if they've um, fixed the, um, the screen share and Facebook producer was pretty messed up for a while. Yeah, well, that, that one I had trouble with because I, yeah. I would try to I would try to, to go from a live video like this, which is this frame on within uh, Facebook producer, and then switch over to screen share and it wouldn't let me. Right. It, whatever you started with, it lets you. It had you stay there. So I think mm-hmm. as they become more sophisticated, they're probably going to try and emulate the things that you see in eCam and Restream and Streamyard and all the others. Correct. Yeah. That's what I, it. It looks more and more like that all the time. Yeah. Uh, I was going to show you. We would just take a quick peek, maybe. At... I, think, I think the two-person Facebook producer is only available on the iPhone still. Oh. So I think you can only do that with the iPhone. Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to show. So let's take a quick peek at screen share. I'm going to show you just to show you what it looks like. Uh, let me go to my screen. Where is my screen? There it is. I'm going to do share screen. And it make, it lets me choose from my various tabs. For example, I'm in Chrome right now. So I'm going to find my Canva. There. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this screen. Can you see that? Yes. Mm-hmm. So what I did today was I took, for example, some past. This was. Uh, can I get to it? No, this is a total health life. This was our typical marketing happy hour. There we go. I do like the fact that Chrome lets you enlarge it. That was our typical sort of marketing happy hour logo. Actually, this is it. All right. Uh, I, sorry, this is the banner that we typically would use in a Facebook Live. And then I just played with it. So we moved to Wednesdays. And because it was hump day, I put the camel in there. And then I moved up to here, and this was our last one where we talk about, are you self-employed or a business owner? It was the difference between having a job that where you're working for yourself and then managing lots of people. And right. it was kind of a lonely thing, so I, mm-hmm. I took that little example from the desert. And then today, this was one version I was considering, but I eventually went with this one because I kind of like the go live to survive. 
So anyway, but that gives you an example of what it looks like in terms of a screen share. Now, the key is know where your tabs are because I got to come back and I got to stop the screen share. <laughs> Boom. So, so <laughs> yeah, I get cool. nervous when I play with too many buttons inside a stream. Yeah. The that's one nice thing though here is the screen share is like you're adding another guest. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks, looks like it. It makes a little easier to. Yeah. I mean, I could. I could I could pop them back in if I wanted to just because there's just a little button in there. The challenge that I find with doing screen shares, you're doing multiple streams. You know, you you got to you got to shift them. So you go to from Canva back to our little pictures within the larger frame. No, this is a very cool platform. I like it. Yeah, it is. It's pretty simple, and it's not in it's not very expensive. I mean, we use I used the free one for a long time, and then there's a there's a medium one. Was that John like twenty five or something like that? But then I'm using yeah. now. Yeah. We're, we're going with the $49 a month one, which enables you to have a lot more capacity in terms of streaming to more platforms. But right. I, I have yet to figure out if it's really worth st live streaming to eight different platforms simultaneously. So yeah. How, how many think, can you? I think it's probably good for three would probably be best in my opinion. I think so. How many can you broadcast to with the free version? Is it two? Two. 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 So yeah. that would be Facebook and YouTube. I mean, that's probably enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It could, be, it could be enough. The only challenge is that you're going to lose, you know, the logo is going to show the duck, the StreamYard duck it's in, the, in your yard. upper right-hand corner. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you but can... I've, I've seen lots of people do that. I mean, like, you can't get these overlays with the free version. So we actually put marketing happy hour and, you know, news and views that you can use. You could do an overlay of anything you want. I've seen people mm -hmm. do frames coming across where they'll have, you know, two guests and they have all kinds of fancy schmancy um, graphics above and below as the background for your, for your stream. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where'd you get the logo? You made that? Uh, I created it in Canva. So <laughs> it <was> Canva. Oh, <laughs> weird. Okay. I love Canva. I've become a Canva holic now. So. Yeah, I subscribe to it. I just yeah. never really play around with it. I but. mean, now now that there's, I've been doing some some. I haven't really got mastered the GIF yet, or GIF or GIF, but I have done a lot of uh, animated videos now from can from my designs where they put the layers in, and it's actually pretty cool. But then when you when you download them, the challenge is that your animation then disappears towards the end of the video. So I have to put it into QuickTime or something else and chop off the last two seconds because at the end it just disappears instead of being a sustained image. So, but those are the things you learn through screwing up and making massive mistakes just like today. So, <laughs> yeah. Marketing, marketing is one big experiment. Oh, I mean, so you just have to be, and you know this well, Ed. You you got to be willing to face the blow-ups as well as the successful things. Uh, yeah, like it's 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 like ninety-nine percent yeah failure, one percent success. Or or if you're really good, like in the venture capital world, because I used to hang out with a lot of VCs in DC. Kid you not, VC in DC, and and these venture capitalists, they would tell you straight off. Like I re I remember with uh with a couple of them, they would tell me that you know you have let's say you invest in 10 ventures, you're hoping that one or two are going to become a success and you're okay with losing all your money on the either other eight or nine. Uh, that's, ventures. that's a tough, you know, I, I have a son who's uh, he works for a hedge fund. Yeah. He's in the stock market, you know, it's a long short hedge fund. So you gotta be mm -hmm. long. Short, so you're, you're, you've got to constantly play that spread. Yeah. And I think the hardest thing that he's got is it's, it's the mental anguish that you go through when you deal with the losses, the gains are amazing. You feel like a, you know, I can tell talking to him. I mean, it his voice sings when it goes. It was a good way. day, <laughs> and it's it's just a, it's a tough game. It's emotionally tough, especially if you're a competitive person, because you're you you want to win, yeah, but yeah. you're always going to lose. No, well, I mean, I, I'm a reformed day trader, and I after okay, I had yeah. my big wins, I pushed myself away from the table and cashed in all my chips. Because yeah. I knew, I knew that I did not have immortality, and I knew that my streak of good luck was about to end, and that the best thing I ever did was to stop. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what, marketing is, is. I mean, listen, every every business has their own. Yeah. You know, little idiosyncrasies. I guess you call. Them. You got winners and losers, and you just you keep testing till you find your winners, and uh, you drop your losers, and just be be content with the idea that you're going to have a certain ad spend until you find the winners. 
Well, you know what? I'm running with 10xdisplayads.com. So that's that's the new venture, 10xdisplayads.com. And it's a, it's a great program. It's not easy to get into and learn uh, like SEO, Facebook. You know, anybody can get into building websites, yep. you know, learning a little bit about SEO, Facebook. But display ads are another it's another channel that you just can't easily get into and figure mm -hmm. out. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, they're, they're, it's it's very interesting, but for for the certain things, it works really well. And it was it was sort of an accident how it happened. And um, you know, I took a chance with a client of mine in in New York City, who was getting some really good rankings for some very unique keywords. And then we started to run these um, display retargeted display ads, and nothing happened for seven weeks. The first seven weeks, yeah. nothing happened. And then all of a sudden, he started to appear on the New York Post. I think and there's we, a magic six-week thing. Once you pass that 45-day threshold, things start getting interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very interesting you say that because that's what happened. Yeah. And that's yeah. when these things started to work. And when I saw the kind of business that was coming in from these ads, mm -hmm. it, it just, you know, the lights went on. But it took it took two years. Yeah. From that point to get to this point where it's like, okay, I think I got a business here. I yeah. know I have a business. You you worked together. You you took out all the bugs and created a system. Now, that's what it was. And it was it's a yeah. long haul. Yeah, and it's a lot of chance and it's a lot of blind faith. And yeah, you know, you're running down these, uh, you know, you're running down these paths, and you don't know what it's, you don't know what is going to slice up along the way, and whether you're going to get blown up and you're going to go down another path. And sometimes you know, the market isn't right for certain things, and then all of a sudden things change, yeah. and it opens up the door to that new to that old new opportunity. I think yeah. right it back reminds back. me, in terms of searching the opportunity and opening up the doors, it's like it's almost like sometimes it's like the entrepreneurial slaughterhouse where suddenly you're you're sent through with the rotating knives, and then <laughs> you come out of the other end and you pick yourself up and try to heal up and then go to the next thing. You know, the one thing the one thing I think about marketing is that. It always, you know, the biggest misconception that people have about the internet is that you launch an ad and you're going to get instant winnings and it doesn't work that way. No. And it's like, if you've got the, if you've got the right target, if you're targeting the right market and you're staying in front of the same audience over and over and yep. over and over, yep. and poor marketing works, but where it fails is when you don't, when you go down a certain path, and you say, okay, it didn't work. And then you quit right before it starts to work. And you say, okay, I'm going to go do this. Mm -hmm. And then you go down that path and it doesn't work. But if you stick with one of them, it just, if you're, if you're going after the right audience and you're just in front of them over and over and over, it, it always works. It always yeah. works. Yeah, that's the three feet from gold thing. You know, you stop digging and somebody else bought your gold mine and suddenly all they did is a few more shovels found. Yeah, well, that's, right out of, uh, that's right out of uh, Napoleon Hill's book. Mm -hmm. no. And right. he stole it from somebody else, from what I remember. So that's like, <laughs> but, wait, but, but what's great about the ads that you're doing? See, here's the thing the live video, doing live video, and this is the little known dirty secret of various algorithms is if you're an advertiser with the platform on which you're live video, you will be rewarded with some organic reach because you are a pay to play kind of person. Yes. Right, right, and that's that. So, if you really want your ads to pop even more, go go with live video on whatever ad platform you're hanging well, out. Well, you know what? We can make we can make these video ads. Now, yep. I, I I've got the tool to make it work. I just got to figure out how to make it work. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I've started working with motion ads, which the motion ads are pretty cool because yep. they they're like a little bit of an animated video, a little bit, yep. very short. Yep, but the the video ads. That's my next. I got to get in the I, lab and work, you know, I work will, on that. I will tell you that when it comes to length of video, it's very interesting because we've had some good results with. Um, we had some really good results with video ads within Facebook, but sometimes, which surprised the heck out of me, the still image, the the static image, has worked better than the video ad. So that's that's been really interesting because we've oh, been know, playing and experimenting with that these days. Well, with the 10x the the 10x system, I can create still graphic ads, 
I can create motion ads and I can also create a video ad and I can run them as part of the 10 X program so that they rotate. So when somebody sees your ad, so they're seeing a still, they're seeing a motion, they're seeing a video, then it rotates. And then you see another still, and then maybe another motion. So you're, you're breaking it up a little bit. So the, which is a cool concept. I do have a question for you. Are you staying within the real estate niche? No, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, that was I, a heavy I, sigh. So, <laughs> you know, that's that's the biggest anguish that I always have is that you know, are, is it better to stay with one niche? Um, I was actually this is I think this is where I've run into problems. I think everybody runs into problems as you try and bite off too much. Yeah. But when you focus on one thing over and over and over, you really, really get good at it. But I'm going after owners and brokers who need to are looking to market space for either yeah. sale or lease. Yeah. But I could also add a page to the site for tenants. You know, so now I yeah. can work with businesses because I've I've worked with both. Yeah. Well, which two which which has brought you the greatest ROI? You know what? Um both. Both have both. brought you the greatest. Both work. It's kind of both work. Both work. Of both work. I mean, is it? I think. I think the real estate has a lot of potential if I can find the right clients. Like you know, like if you think about you know uh, somebody that owns fifteen buildings, fifteen yeah. office buildings, yeah. and usually, even in San, whether it's in San Diego or you're in Miami or Nashville, you're going to find those local owners that own fifteen office buildings. Yeah. Or so another one owns fifteen apartment buildings, or somebody else owns fifteen strip centers. You know, it's like, like that kind of that that is like the primo. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I, I I think when you're looking at people who have that much office space within their portfolio, they there's a lot of those folks who are hurting right now because of the downsizing of the tenants. They're taking up less space post COVID or you know during See, that. That's, that's why I think that this is a primo. Yeah. Uh, it's just an excellent time to do this because there's a big shift in the use of real estate. Yeah. And, you know, if you look yeah. at you know where I am. I'm in I'm in Wilton, Connecticut, which is Fairfield County, Connecticut, over in Westport, Connecticut, mm -hmm. which is a really really high end town. You got a lot of hedge fund, a lot of wealthy people, and right. they have a little main street that has it's uh, it's a real boutique retail corridor. Mm -hmm. And do you know that like seventy five percent of the retail is gone? Right, it's yeah. vacant. Yeah, and it's been that way for a year and a half. Yeah, almost two years. Coming on two years. Yeah. It gets worse and worse. And it's not COVID. No, it's pre-COVID. <laughs> it pre, it's pre-COVID. I mean, this is all due to... Well, you know, my theory, I don't know if you ever heard my... John's probably heard this, but, you know, I, I spoke to uh, about 200 um, chiropractors about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody at the time got it. But what I did was I stood up in front of 200 people. I had a 10 by 10 screen. I had my PowerPoint presentation. And yeah. my first slide was a, a couple cavemen standing around a pot you know black boiling pot and then they had like their teepees around it and i said this is the business model since the beginning of time it's a downtown that's where everybody would congregate and you've got homes around it and then you have a path to the next village which is set up the same way and i said that the entire world has been built around that model mm -hmm. you know over time you've got trains and boats and cars and planes but it's connecting people where they would go into an area and it was the right. same thing i said until this thing came out and no longer do you have to drive to a downtown or go to a downtown to meet somebody it's changing the entire business model and i think that's what's happening here and it's 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 moving fast but sort of slow at the same time yeah and there's... i think we, you know we've got a major major transition of the way properties in the world is structured. And oh, I, yeah. Yeah. I think we're seeing it and during COVID. I think COVID I, has brought around about a lot of these changes. Yeah, San Diego has seen, um, I want to say between 25 or 30% increase in vacancies for office buildings just yeah. in the last just in the last six months yeah. and and because a lot of tenants are downsizing they say well wait a minute oh i don't have to have as much space for my workers they can work from home we can check on zoom i have software to monitor their productivity um and one of our local 
advisors, business uh, associates is in commercial real estate. And he just says there's just a major shift that's happening right now. Yeah, it's a major one. shift. And that's, it's, 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 it's this thing in retail and, you know, what we're doing right here. But that space is going to be used for something. Oh, yeah. So the issue is, is that they haven't adapted to the new price levels. You can fill those spaces, but you're yeah. going to have to drop your price down. You will. Yeah. So you see, you're seeing that uh, sort of a deflation in or, cost. Or, or you can do use our 10x display ad system, and you can take those prospective tenants away from your competition. Right. And you can't just you 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 need digital marketing of some sort today. Yeah. Well, and I think, and as we we're talking about before, the. Uh, Using live video enables you to have this wonderful opportunity whereby you can engage on a much deeper level with people. That's why I, I put in part one, the pre of my premature, premature. Uh, one premature yeah. one. Uh, I got a, I've got a client who's messaging me. I'm trying to get him off of Facebook. Let me get off of there. I'm just gonna close. You know I, I, hang, hold on one second. Hang on here. This is yeah, it's getting darker on the East Coast, and I don't have my lights on. I, hold, I know. On. That's the other Put one. your lights on. I have to adapt to that all the time. So if you're on the East Coast and you're doing live video. But your camera looks really good, John. It really has adapted to the change in light. You, you, your image looks fine. Well, I've got to the point now where I keep one, one light on in this room, oh. and it seems to balance out, and I have the extra wide-angle camera, so it pulls in more light. I'm getting right, good at finding the mute button also for when I cough. You're doing well. <laughs> I've trained. Anyway, so, uh, sleep hasn't destroyed you too much today. <laughs> as long as so I do, do, you, do, you, do you guys stick? Are you on for about an hour? One hour? You know, hour? we're trying to do a shorter format. I think we want to go under a half hour, like maybe even 20 minutes. But when we bring people, interesting people on whom we haven't spoken with before, we try to go for maybe an hour. But, you know, even even the 45 minute thing, I think, you know, it's it's trying to figure out, find the snippets and little parts of this that might be really good that we can repurpose and change into short little two minute or three minute videos that we can share on social. So, yeah, but I need an editor. <laughs> My wife has an editor, but I don't have an editor yet. So <laughs> mm. that's all right. Yeah. Okay, so that's something to consider. So anybody who's out there, if you know a good video editor, ping me. So, and also if you if you're looking for tips and tricks and other things with respect to live video, you can enter comments in here. You can even reach us on the uh, exactly. marketing happy hour page or on John's profile, my profile. We're always open for direct messages or Facebook messages. Yeah. But I will say that. Uh, Creating a community is a lot easier when you're going live within your group on a regular basis. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think the local marketing strategies is a really interesting idea because mm -hmm. there's so many unique strategies oh. and it, you know, people are not aware. Uh, you know, we, you know, John and I were, um, we, when was it about a month or two ago? Um, I was up on Cape Cod and there was a boat down in Chatham. Uh, it was I 200. spent at Chatham. I spent yeah, was, several days in Chatham. All right. Well, this is this this was a 260 foot yacht right off of uh, Stage Harbor. Yeah. And you know, which is amazing. You don't see yachts like that very often up in that area. And I'm uh, here in San Diego Bay. <laughs> and but what was I was really blown away by the size of the yacht, and it was a very unique looking yacht. And so I went on my phone. And I'm like, wonder who the heck owns that. And uh, it, it turns out that it was owned by a guy up in uh, who started up in the Boston area. His name is Herb Chambers. And Herb owned 60 car dealerships within 75 miles of Boston, Boston. thereabouts. Yeah. You know, within, I maybe, remember you did a case study on Herb Chambers. I think did. I popped in a couple of times. We did. Yeah, that was an amazing story because yeah. you, you look at it and it's like, here's a guy that's going into a local market. Yeah. And he has done somehow or other over a period of 40 years, yeah. he's acquired all these car dealerships and he's got some kind of unique skill to be mm -hmm. able to manage those. Right. And he stayed focused enough to that. He had them all in one area. He didn't deviate. He's not in Connecticut. He's not out in New York. He's not in Vermont, you know, or, you know, out in Ohio, you know, he's right there within one market and he's his rev. I think he sells, 
close to 60,000 cars a year mm -hmm. right up in that market. But it's a really, really interesting about how a guy went into a local market and just stayed very focused and built this empire. Well, and, think, about, think about your ad spend. I mean, if you if if you're doing TV and and even digital or say uh, targeting cable TV stations in that area, it's so much more economical just to saturate a local market. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so it, there's so many opportunities like that for many different businesses, yeah. and there's so many businesses that I talk to who spread themselves too far. Yep. They right. go geographically yeah. too big. Yeah. Yeah. And so many and, businesses will start and say, you know, I want to be, I, I, I just have this immediate notion. I want to be a nationwide company. And it's so easy to, it's so much easier to start small or in a small area and then grow from there. You know, you know, another, another interesting area and blow up. Another interesting story, um, Dr. V was uh, yeah. about three weeks, four weeks ago, I was up on the Cape. I think it was over Labor Day weekend. And there was another yacht which we never see. We never see these yachts up there. Yeah. Anyway, there was a 200 foot yacht. And this, and the guy who owned that yacht was he owned, uh, he was the one that started uh, Jimmy John sandwiches, Jimmy John sandwiches. all little local sandwich shops. Mm -hmm. And somehow or other, he figured out this little model and it's local, local, local one at a time. And he built it, built it, built it, built it. Franchise. Right? And uh, yeah. I, I don't know if it's a franchise, but you know, so that's that's our topic is talking about these business strategies. And uh, this has really become, you know, for me, that's really become, more, you know, my business has the way I've made money for the last, you know, 10 plus years is selling website services and SEO and, you know, other marketing services for uh, for you know, small to mid sized businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, but really what I do is I'm, I'm more like a business strategist. Yeah. And I because once you've got the strategy right then the marketing starts to work. But if you right. don't, so I, many start with the say, okay, I want to start the marketing. I, I had a call, from, I, I had an email from a guy today and he said, hey, you know, I because I built this one page website for this guy. And he's a, you know, he's a specialty type of contractor. And he sent me an email today and he said, oh, take a look at this website. What is it going to take to for me to build this website? And I said, don't spend your money on a website like that. Spend your money on the marketing first, make yeah. money, and then we'll build you this website down the road. Yeah. But, you know, just something like that. He was ready to go like, oh, I need that website because the website, you know, I need that $10,000 website. That's what I need. No, you don't need a $10,000 website. You need marketing to a one page website. Yeah, that caught you. No, I, I agree with you 100. I think most most websites are are a bit of a failure actually because they tend to be brochure websites. They're not really optimized to capture leads. And I think that we've seen this with advertising on Facebook and uh, YouTube and some Google ads. That it's a great way to build your email list to get subscribers in there because Facebook could shut you down. Uh, YouTube could delete your channel by accident I, or even on purpose. I've seen, I had two friends who lost their YouTube channels. Yeah. Or your, your ad account, your ad account disappears on Facebook one day. Who would ever think that, that could happen? How would that ever happen to? How would that know? How could it possibly Well, my, my, dis, my uh, 10X display ads website is basically going to be a one page website. Yep. That's basically what it's going to be. I mean, actually I'm going to add, you know, like a, maybe an about us page and a contact yeah. page and maybe a blog, but that's it. That's all it's, I need. It's kiss. And I, I don't, I, I do the keep it simple, sweetheart, instead of stupid, I replace right. that one. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, so it's, it's a very interesting thing to be using, but integrating live video on your broadcast. I, you know, John and I, we've done a couple Instagram live and though, you know, my wife, with her Instagram lives on Tuesdays at 1 PM has been extremely good in terms of driving traffic to her blog. I mean, the integration is just, I mean, that interaction, the interaction and the engagement have been spectacular because people would even put little hearts in there. There's a little wave thing. So when I'm helping produce it for her, all we have is the, the camera and it's sitting on a tripod and I'm following her around the kitchen yeah. and, and there's a little wave. People can wave and you hit the little wave to wave back at them and they think that she's waving at them, but I'm the one who's pushing the little wave icon to wave back at them. And, and, it's driving traffic to the blog. It, it, it drives traffic to the sign up for the email list and it creates actually super fans. 
that level of engagement from Instagram lives, I don't think you should ignore. And people say, oh, it's just a young person platform. But I've had a couple of clients who are targeting between 25 and 45 year old potential clients, and they're on Instagram. So mm -hmm. it's no longer a kid's thing. The kids are over on TikTok. Right. So right, right. even that's changing. Well, you so, know what? I, 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 I'll tell you, this platform here, like just this conversation, this three-way conversation today, there's a lot of great energy here. Yeah. You and, know, which is, that's very, very interesting. That's what I see more and more is that, and we've had as many, did we, Jock, Jock, did, Jock, Jock, John, Jock, my 13, <laughs> more coffee. More <laughs> anyway, he, so, so, um, God, what was I saying? Yeah, we've had as many as I think uh, six or seven at a time. Yeah. Well, no, I think we can go to eight. It's almost a Brady bunch. Uh, I think we can go to 10. Was it 10? I think it's 10. Right, we tried to max it out. I think we got to seven or I eight. Think, I can't uh, right. I think we maxed it. I think we did like six or seven. Or six or seven. Yeah. But and think, then seven was kind of odd. It's like it's like having the 49th state on your flag. Yeah. But that's a little weird because yeah. having a so, car like Try to have a conversation with ten people. That's really hard. But we did a lot of we did a lot of uh, Google Hangouts years and years ago, and yeah. those those were awesome. We had some amazing people would just pop in and pop out, and those there sometimes they were gosh they were like five hour. And it was four yeah. people, uh, you know, conversation among four people is just yeah. magical. That that fits in perfectly. So so my question is um, so here I'm a novice at video in this kind of platform yeah yes. so what i want i'm going to ask this is what is the one thing what is the one platform that i can use to get to run these uh you know let's say i'm going to do a three o'clock every day you know 10 15 minute platform like this one here you could go straight into facebook producer I mean, or you can opt for something like StreamYard. Yeah. I know people who do Ecamm, Ecamm Live, but they're only broadcasting to one location. And Ecamm's got a lot of cool tools and widgets and things. Ed doesn't have a Mac. Oh, well, in that case, you're out of luck on Ecamm. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I would say uh, stream, StreamYard's yeah. universal. So. Yeah, it's really probably a combination of using the regular Facebook Live yeah. so that you get more interaction with people directly. And something like StreamYard, where you can um, share screen, and you know, yeah, because this is, this is clearly what the this is what the group is missing is they're missing they're missing this energy. Yeah, yeah, and but you will get that energy when you bring people in, and you know, yeah. hey, anybody down down here want to come in and talk? Hit the link so you can put the link below so that you can allow them in. I can tell you that on Instagram Live, I don't know if you can see anything about this now. That's my wife's stories. But I was going to say that on Instagram Live, uh, one of the things that was really interesting is that people can act, they can actually request that they come into your live on Instagram, but yeah. you're limited to just two, not necessarily cats, but there'd be one cat above and one cat below. Right. And and but you can bounce them out. You can just like a bouncer at a club, and yeah. you can invite the next person in. Now during during Maggie's Facebook lives, sorry, Instagram lives. She used to do Facebook lives at seven yeah. o'clock every Sunday. That didn't work. Instagram live has gotten much better. And but during her Instagram live, some people will request to come in. I think it was two weeks ago. We had five people wanted to come in and be featured in the broadcast. And I just kept denying every single one of them because we only had a 12 minute broadcast. So you kind of have to because you just you, yeah. you got to be in control of the broadcast too. Yeah. So, and but I, will, I will say that you know you might find depending on you know what your audience is, you might find that some people really will do well say with Instagram Live as a supplement to Facebook, mainly because Facebook owns Instagram. And it's very easy through Creator Studio and through Business Manager to create ads that go to both platforms. Right. And, 
And so there's, so to me, I mean, this is just my personal opinion because I'm working with doctors who want to create online businesses. I am finding the older doctors on Facebook, but also some of the 40 to 50 year old doctors are on Instagram. And so right. I don't want to, I want to be able to capture their attention as they scroll through each of their feeds. And so for me, it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. Now for somebody else, it's it's LinkedIn, YouTube. For somebody and, and LinkedIn Live, John and I have been trying to get on LinkedIn Live forever and a day now. And it's it's only a matter of time till they That's approve right. us after the fifth application. Yeah. We'll keep going. yeah. But LinkedIn could turn out to be wonderful for your strategy. I know and there is on LinkedIn they couldn't get a LinkedIn Live, so yeah, I know. Well, you put you can't put your stream key, a little piece of code into LinkedIn and stream through LinkedIn, but not directly through their platform. Right. And right. that's a little backdoor approach, which I haven't used yet. Oh, we should so try that. Give it a try. Yeah. I was surprised that it allowed me to do that, but I couldn't go live natively within LinkedIn's platform. Mm. Yeah. Well, we'll have to give it uh, a walk. Something well, to try out. Keep my, goal is, my goal is to just get one going. Yeah. If I can get one, then I can do two. Hey, yeah. if you've already got your group on the Book of Faces on Zookbook, then I would stick with that. Start. start with a group. Yeah. yeah, stay with a group. Stay with a group. Get a page, too, because with a page, you can run ads. And groups, you can't run ads. With a personal profile, you can't run ads. And so what John and I have done, because we're going to be doing our, our own uh, course trial test in a couple of weeks is we created a group first, which is a little bit backwards. I think we should have created the the page so we could run ads and get people coming to the page. So I actually had to migrate people from the group back to the page so that they would be more aware of what we're doing. So sure. I see. I see. Well what is the what is the advantage of a group over a over a page? Well, the group is just you, it's private. It's an uh, it it creates an identity, it creates community. Mm -hmm. A page has less of that community effect, and in the group, right. you can you can create units of study. You can do all kinds of different things that a page just doesn't offer you. There's more of your billboard, getting attraction to the group, yeah. getting attraction to you know the things that you do. Yeah, uh, and it's kind of the stepping stone over to the um, to the group. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, groups groups have a sense of exclusivity. There's the velvet rope. There's the behind the scenes. There's right. the man right. behind the curtain, like in the Wizard of Oz. You know, the group. It, if you join the group, it's a secret society almost, where you share more intimate conversations, where you feel safe to be more authentically you. And a page just doesn't have that feel to it. Right. Right. So. But, and it's your tribe. Your tribe gathers in the group. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So you guys are probably almost wrapped up here. Uh, yeah, we're just about there. We're two minutes before the hour. So do you, anybody have any final thoughts before on live video before we leave? Ed, why don't you, since you're our guest, you go first. Well, I just thank you for having me on this. This was really yeah. enlightening. This was great. This is great. It uh, inspired me to really get this Good. thing rolling. Um, I mean, I'm trying to, you know, I, I have to get in it and do it and try it and see what works and see what, see what kind of feedback I get, what resonates with people. Um, yep. you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, I, my, my background in the internet marketing world is, is uh, search driven, you know, it's all SEO. So it's not, I don't care. You know, I try not to think about what I think, right. it's what, what everybody else thinks and what they want. It's talking to the needs of your people and and helping them, and if you if you do a good enough job, you'll get them to feel smarter for having known you. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I just uh, you know my takeaway from this is that I just got to get one of these going and start speaking and do something that I can that's very simple that I can replicate every single day yes. for a month. And then once I get that, then we can move on to other things. But yeah, for this is a broadcast studio in your hand. Yeah. I strongly suggest that it, it, regardless of technology, go with this. Because John and I have both been amazed at the sound quality, the video quality, the images. I mean, this really is your studio. And you can go live every single day where you are for a five-minute video. And yeah. in doing that, you'll build your audience pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think it's probably the the easiest way to start. Yep. You know, we Ed and I were talking about this today. You know, what's the easiest way to get going? Easiest way to get going is with your phone, believe it or not. <laughs> it is my phone. So I wouldn't be using StreamYard then. No, right? I, I, I mean, browser, it's browser based too. So now you can actually yeah. start but it on. Again, again, and everybody kind of touts, you know, StreamYard is StreamYard's a great tool, but it's not the be all the end all tool. No. I think, I think there's got to be a little bit of a combination of using Facebook's own creator studio and you, then using a tool like StreamYard to have. More of this atmosphere, the group atmosphere. You can and have greater, reach. I think great potentially greater reach. Although yeah. I will, I will agree with John that I think that yeah, when you're using the native platform for you have greater. Same thing with scheduling. Yeah. When we schedule posts for clients, I've got chiropractors and dentists and others. When we schedule posts, if I if I try to do scheduling within like a Hootsuite or a Planoli or something like that, we don't get the same reach as when you do it right through Creator Studio. Right. So, so we want you to stay I there, not go anywhere yeah. else. I'd love to uh, come back and visit you guys again. Report your right. progress, We'd John. Love to have you back? Yeah. What, John? What do you have to say? Well, um, you know, I think the uh, the thing that I would add to this, and I, I said a couple times, is there's no kind of be all to end all complete solution to this issue of how do I broadcast live. There are different tools that are better for use than others. You know, obviously, um, Facebook's own Creator Studio is a great great way to get more interaction quicker with the audience because it's Facebook's own native platform. And then a tool like StreamYard or BeLive is awesome to have multiple guests. And when you do something like this and you have more people to talk to or you're sharing screens or that kind of a thing. So don't try to stuff everything in one lump package or use one specific tool. I think it kind of... Yeah, and I would add on, I would, yeah, I would add on to that because it's good to have more than one tool because if somebody's servers go down and you're scheduled a broadcast, you might need your Zoom to go into Facebook or something else, or maybe Facebook is down and you still need a platform and you've got to know how to work your way around YouTube to do a YouTube live where you don't have your tools at the ready. And I know that you can do a YouTube live from your phone. Mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be underestimated either. And I would say that I would concur with you, John, which is I just have to, you know, don't be afraid to go live on a phone because it, it, it's a computer masquerading as a phone. It's a studio. It's a studio masquerading as a phone. And I would say, yeah. don't be a fool. Try every tool before you marry one of these things. Yeah, so, right. And they do, you know, they do full feature films or they, they have done full oh, feature yeah. films on an iPhone. Yeah. My favorite were the recent yeah. commercials several months ago with the with the iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max. They did the whole thing. Now they had some good editors, but they did film the whole commercial with the snowballs and people flying wow. off of hills and things like that. All of it was for, were from these little cameras. Yeah. So I just thought that was pretty amazing. So. That is amazing. so Speaking of amazing and interesting and everything else like that, we hope that you come back here next week for another episode of the Marketing Happy Hour. We will be on at 3 p.m. Pacific. I will set my alarm for that. Five, sorry, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central, 4 Mountain, and noon Hawaiian Standard Time. Because I've seen you from Oahu. You are watching. All right. Bye well, for now. We'll see great, you next thanks. week. John, thanks, Dr. V. Welcome. Bye-bye.